Here we have a hard drive that was mailed over to us because it's not being detected by the computer. Customer needs data and the customer also mailed over a similar hard drive that we can use for parts. We have two hard drives, two similar drives, and that's a good thing. Let's read what the customer wrote. My external Toshiba hard drive is powering up and spinning. My laptop is not able to see it. Let's go ahead and power up the hard drive. We're going to plug the USB cable and see what happens. I did hear the tone, and that's a good thing. The drive is spinning. Oh. Wow. We hear a clicking sound. And beeps. Since we have a donor drive, let's go ahead and swap the boards and see if we still have that clicking sound. If not, then we know the problem is related to the motherboard. So I removed one, two, three, four, five, six screws. We're going to do the same thing with the other drive and we're going to swap the board. And I just want to see if we still get the clicking or beeping sound when we swap the board. I have the donor board labeled with a D and the donor hard drive labeled with a D. I do not want to confuse the boards or the hard drives. So I put the donor board on the customer's hard drive and let's plug it in. See what happens. Look at that, the hard drive is spinning and we're not getting that clicking or beeping sound. That's awesome. What we're going to do is we're going to swap the firmware from the customer's board onto the donor board and we're going to try again because the computer is not going to be able to detect the hard drive as of now unless we swap the BIOS chip. Right now I do not know if the motherboard contains more than one bias chip or if the firmware is part of the controller. I do see a firmware chip right here. We may have two firmware chips on this motherboard. Let's take a look. I see one here, wind bond. And I also see one here. So I see, I see two chips. And we're going to assume that we need to transfer those two chips. Let's go ahead and do it. We are currently looking at the donor drive. Pin number one is on top here. Right, and now let's go to the customer's board. We're going to remove the firmware chips and solder them on to the donor board right here this one goes right here and now we're gonna swap bias chip number two Very nice. Now we're going to take that donor board. We're going to install it on the customer's drive and see what happens. Will it work? Let's see. So right now we do have that clicking sound and no more beeping.
So right now we're not getting any more beeping sound, but we do have a clicking sound. And that means we have to open up the hard drive. I'll continue working on this drive tomorrow. Right now it's too late. Already closing time. And I'll see you again tomorrow. All right, let's continue working on the hard drive. We left this yesterday because we did not have enough time to work on it. It was closing time. Today I started by removing the screws of the top cover to expose the internals of the hard drive. We want to see what's going on and why the hard drive is making a clicking sound. I have the hard drive placed inside this dust-free clean room. We sell this device. You can log in to northwishfix.com, search for clean room, and you can read more about it. I'll go over the features quickly so I can show you how this device works. On the left side, we have a knob to increase or decrease fan speed. And when I say fan speed, as you know, dust gets absorbed, gets sucked from inside here, and it gets filtered via a three-layer filtration system that you have on top here. This device is capable of filtering PM2.5 airborne microwave particles. So we don't have to worry about particles or dust accumulating on the platter of the hard drive, and we can work on this hard drive in a safe manner. Right next to it, we have a button to turn the device on or off. On the right side, we have a dial and a button. The dial is to increase or decrease brightness, and we currently have the white light on. And if we press on the button, we can switch to a green light. And the purpose of the green light is so that you can easily detect if you have dust particles on the platter, or if you have smudges, or if you have scratches. It's hard to detect with white light, but with green light, it's very easy to see any imperfections on the platter. Just like if you are installing tempered glass on a phone, you want to make sure you do not have any dust particles on the screen, or you do not have any smudges or any imperfections. So you put the phone here, you turn the green light on, you make sure the screen is clean, everything is good. If you do see dust particles on the screen or on the hard drive, just use a dust blower, blow that dust away, dust will get sucked inside here, and it will get filtered via the three-layer filtration system that you have on top here. And that's what the green light is used for. Do not keep the green light on, because you're going to end up seeing green walls if you stare at this for a long period of time. So just use it for inspection and turn it back to white. White is more comfortable to work with. Let's switch over to the other camera so you can see a close-up. And I'm going to plug the USB cable and see what's going on. The platter is spinning. Oh, look at this. Reading head is going back and forth. And that's where the clicking sound is coming from. Why is this happening? I do not know. It's most likely a problem with the mechanism of the reading head. So as you can see, the reading head is going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And that's why we are hearing the clicking sound. And at some point, it stops. Clearly, we have a problem with the reading head mechanism of the hard drive. Now, one way to fix this, and that's what data recovery labs do, is to transfer platters from one hard drive to another, from the bad hard drive to a good hard drive. The other hard drive must be an exact match and in a good working condition. By transferring the platters over, we should be able to read the files and do data recovery for the customer. But one tiny problem is I do not have prior experience transferring platters between hard drives. I never did that before, but maybe we should. Maybe I should practice on a lot of the bad hard drives that we have in the shop here with the right tools, of course. And once I'm comfortable, we can revisit this hard drive, transfer the platters over, and see how it goes. Let me know what you think. For now, we're going to end the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions. And we'll do something else in the next video.